Now let us turn to Luke 9 chapter, please, from the 22nd verse. The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be slain and be raised the third day. And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever will lose his life for my sake, and the same shall save it. For what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world and lose himself, or be cast away? For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed, when he shall come in his own glory and in his Father's and of the holy angels. So, last night we were considering how multitudes were added to the Lord. I like that phrase, added to the Lord. You know, one of the great hindrances today is a foolish spirit of competition. Now, I never did compete with anybody else. I believe God has got exclusive gifts for every person. And every one of you is unique. God has a work for you to do, which none but you can do. Therefore, there is simply no point at all in looking at another man and saying, hey, I, I must be ahead of him, or I must acquire more than he does or that I must have a bigger name. These are all human follies, deeply entrenched in our nature. You know, don't you give room to such follies. I would like parents to take care of their little ones so that we do not get disturbed by any means. Parents must be responsible for their little ones. Now, so discipleship is having a focus on Jesus Christ. And when your focus is on the Lord Jesus, you don't look around you, you know. You don't say, this man has got this, I don't. My brother, my sister has got these possessions, I don't. Nothing of those things bother us. Our focus is on Jesus. Now the Lord help me to keep my focus on Jesus. And the net result of this was that I was little disturbed by anything that was taking place around me. And I was not bothered by this man and that man, and this fellow says this, so that man does this. No, each one of us is responsible to God. And I am not to sit in judgment over 
all this man is doing or that man is doing. I have taught people to go to the Lord, to know his will and do it. That's what my father taught me. That was the only rule that he gave us in our home. Go to the Lord, seek his will, and do it. Do not just say, well, this is good, or that is also acceptable. No. Uh, there are too many things around us that appear to be harmless today, but they do a lot of harm eventually. Divergence from the will of God is going to result in the destruction of the generations to come. You can see the spiritual genes of a father in the children, the spiritual genes. You know, we do not want to give some kind of disease, some kind of chronic ailment to our children. We say, no, I cannot do this, and some people say, I dare not have children because I'm going to pass on this disease to them. But we never seem to think in terms of spiritual diseases. You know, one of the big spiritual diseases today is just being lackadaisical. How can I look at Jesus and be lackadaisical? You know, wandering about doing this and doing that aimlessly. That's not possible. Here in the 22nd verse, the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be slain and be raised the third day. And so, following that, who is that man that will follow such a master? A master who is headed to the cross. You know, my dear friends, so the Lord says, against that context, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. You know, this business of bringing self to the cross, it is really the crux of the problem. It's the real sticking point in many lives. People are not able to bring their selfishness, their greed, you know, their own ideas, their mind, to the cross and say, Lord, I would rather have your mind. I would rather have your will. I would rather choose your plan. No. Look at the way people rush ahead with their plans. And sometimes they're so afraid that somebody might interrupt their plans, so they do not even want to disclose them. They say, this is what I like, this is what I shall do, and I'm going to do it. Now, irrespective of how much harm that is going to bring in future. Take the flesh. Now, the flesh seems to be ruling 
the nation. You know, we talked in terms of individuals. The flesh profiteth nothing, Jesus said. Nothing. Will I run after something which profits nothing? You mean to say you're going to join an employer or join a corporation which says, I'll pay you nothing? At the end of the month, you're not going to draw a penny as a wage. You're going to gain nothing. You mean to say you will consider such an employment? No. But the Lord Jesus Christ said, the flesh profiteth nothing. But think of lives that have been sabotaged, torpedoed by self, by the flesh. That's all. Some fleshly affection, some fleshly attachment or idol. That's it. How sad that the potential of a person should be just thrown away in the gutter of self. You see, the devil could have easily done that with me. In fact, that was exactly what he meant to do with me. Get me diverted into the flesh. Think of all our congregations the churches. Now, when a pastor in Washington, D.C., near Washington, D.C., said to me, Sir, several years ago, when I returned to my church, after a period of time, as and I was visiting my old church again, I found a lot of women seated with strangers. And their husbands were seated with other women in the church. In the few years that I had been away, people had just married and divorced and married and divorced. Now listen, that is the flesh ruling even in the church. And how can you say it is the church of Jesus Christ? The flesh was never crucified. Just what takes place in the world, as a matter of fact, there is a statistic today which is most alarming that the divorces in the churches have exceeded the divorces in the world. Yes, to many people today, that is their, their mental outlook, or rather, that is their way of thinking. If this works, fine. Otherwise, I'll ditch this girl, I'll ditch this fellow. And that's supposed to be marriage. Or as Europe has decided, why bother about marriage at all? Just live together and discard, live and discard as you go along. See, the, the value of a mother, the value of womanhood has been devalued right to the bottom of the barrel. And you call that the church? 
No, not by any means. Self was never broken. So, over a little argument, people just go their several ways. Over money, over salaries, over something. You know, the devil has any number of things with which to disrupt relationships. The devil does not want an abiding relationship. A relationship where there is oneness and harmony and love. Because it is very disastrous to his kingdom to have a family which functions together. So, there are people, you know, Christmas is a time when people try to win one another with a lot of gifts. Oh, let's give this gift. Let's give the other gift. My dear friends, the greatest gift is a gift of a free-flowing love. You know, I tell people plainly, I don't want any gift from you. That I can have you and have your company is more to me than any gift that you give me. Of course. And I mean it too. Today, some of the children are so troubled. What shall I give dad? What shall I give mother? It has become a kind of obsession and a very stressful thing to many people. But we don't need any of that when there is love. So, against the backdrop of the 22nd verse, I am going to the cross. I must suffer many things and be rejected and be slain and be raised the third day. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. You know, friends, if we can deny ourselves that will of ours and put it wholly in Jesus' hands, you simply do not know what great things will come out of you. You know, by nature, I was a waster. By nature, careless dropping things, you know, not being able to choose the best. By nature, I was a waster. But what the Lord Jesus taught me was to put my will into his hand. I saw that my will was taking me astray, right out of the path. And so I, when I gave my will to the Lord Jesus, there was a struggle, a big struggle, because I was proud and selfish. And there was a great struggle to do that. But let me tell you, my dear friends, wastage is eliminated when your will is given to the Lord. Wastage is eliminated. You begin to live on a different level altogether. So what do we have here? 
If any man will come after me, if anybody wants to follow me, this is what is required. All right, you go for a job. And what will they say when they give you that job? They will say, these are the requirements. Do you fulfill the requirements? That's it. Either you fulfill the requirements or not. So, the Lord Jesus says, all right, if any man wants to follow me, now here are the requirements. Job requirements. Deny yourself. Take up the cross daily and follow me. Take up the cross daily. Now, my dear friends, when you are bearing the cross of Jesus, what are you signifying? You're signifying plainly that you belong to the Lord Jesus. And that you're walking in his footsteps. See, my master went to the cross and I am following him. So I'm carrying his cross. Can you think of a man who is bearing the cross, looking around and picking up a few stones to throw at somebody? Is that possible? No. Nobody who is bearing the cross will think of throwing stones at somebody. That's impossible. See, I'm bearing the cross. I am to bear the weaknesses of others like my master. I've got to carry the liabilities of others, like my master. So I have no time to be just picking up stones and throwing it at somebody. You see, this discipline, uh, discipleship eliminates most of our human problems. There's no room for some of these things. You know how people engage their minds in negativity, in bitterness, in hatred. There's simply no room for that. See, I'm occupied with discipleship. I am not here just to point a finger at you. I'm here to lift you. I'm here to weep for you. See, it's a different attitude altogether. That's a disciple. And then the Lord Jesus Christ said, follow me. Well, I cannot help but see with a lot of pain that I who preach the words of Jesus am still not like him. I say, look, when I'm preaching Christ, is it not a minimal requirement that I should be like him? Should not people see Christ in me? So, my dear friends, who am I following? I'm following Christ. If I'm following Christ, I walk like him. That's just normal. It's not just the height of spirituality or some gift which is given to some exclusive saint. Nothing of the sort. Nothing at all. I, who am I following? 
I'm following Jesus. Let us pray. Equip us then, O Lord. Teach us to know that it is not our money that really equips us. Breathe on us, we pray. In Jesus' holy name. Amen.